Okay, guys, so we have the user management activity over here where we'll be creating a user, trying to assign default table spaces to the user. We'll try to grant some quota on table space to the user. We'll give some permissions and also try to drop a user. First of all, we should know how many users are there inside the database and what is their account status, what is the default table space. We can find these details under the dba underscore users view. Let us query this one, select username, account status, default table space from db underscore users. Let me connect to the database, sql plus slash ssdba. Select username, account status, okay. So let us format the output, set lines, triple line, and then great. Now in this output we can see that, uh, let's take we have the username sys, the account status is open, and the default table space is system, which means whatever objects created by sys user, by default they will be stored under the system table space. The same way we have the system as a user, the account status is open, and the default table space is also system. We have a user Scott, the account is locked, and the default table space is users. So likewise, this query will give you the details of all the users inside the database. Now how this view can help you, or how this query can help you in real time. Let's take application team is complaining that they are not able to connect to the database. Then you will definitely ask the username. Let's take application team is telling that they are trying to connect to the database using Scott user. Now you can see that account has been locked. So as a DBA, you need to unlock the account. And also you can check the default table space like it's users and if you want to change the default table space, you can definitely change it. Next, how to check the username that you are connected with. For example, right now we are connected with the sys user. So you can type this command show user and this will tell you the user with which you are connected. Sometimes you play inside the database. Let's take you connect to Scott user and then from there you connect to any other user and you want to confirm with which user you are connected. At that point of time, show user command will help you out. Next, how to lock or unlock user accounts. Let's take there is a user who is no longer part of the database. Rather than deleting the account directly, what you do is you lock the account for a certain period of time. Let's take you lock the account for next one month and if there is no complaint or nobody is coming back to you saying that why my account is locked, then you can delete the account. It's always a good practice that rather than deleting a user, you just lock the user for a certain period of time. And if nobody is coming back, then you can delete the user. Correct. The same way, the simple command alter user, you just need to give the username and account what is the status, whether you want to unlock the account or you want to lock the account. For example, over here we can see that Scott user account is locked. Let us try to unlock the Scott user account. Alter user Scott account unlock. See, user altered. Let us query the db underscore users and see what is the status of Scott user account. Now we can see that Scott user account is open. Great. If you want to go ahead and log the Scott user account again, then alter user Scott account lock. Done. Once again, we'll check with this query. And we can see that Scott user account is locked. This way, many a times application team will ask you to delete a user account. As a DBA, you should not delete the account immediately because the application team might come up again to you saying like, okay, do one thing, uh, can you recreate the user? 
at that point of time you will have to again create the user then give the necessary permissions to the user it will be a very big process it's always good to just log the user and if nobody is coming to you within one month then you can delete the user if application team comes back to you saying like hey you know what we need the user again then you simply unlock the user next how to create new user inside database the command is very simple create user give the user name identified by and give the password here we are trying to create usr1 as the user and usr1 as the password enter user has been created remember by just creating the user it does not mean now anyone can connect with these credentials from any other client server it's not possible there are further permissions and other things that you need to provide in order to enable this user to connect remotely this is the simplest command of creating a user but we have just now learned in our previous lesson that whenever you create a user you must also define a default table space the same query create user usr2 identified by usr2 you just add the default table space over here and give the table space name in this case whenever the user2 will create any table or any other objects inside the database they will be created inside the users table space let us create this user enter now user2 has been created with default table space as users now once again we'll run our first query db underscore users to see what are the default table spaces of both user1 and user2 okay so we have this user1 the default table space is users and user2 also default table space is users now we'll understand in some time why user1 is having users as the default table space because there is something called as database default table space will understand in some time next how do you change the user password let's say you want to change the password of user 1 then you can issue this command alter user give the username identified by and give the password so if you run this one now user 1 password has been changed to Oracle Now, as I was saying that there is something called as database default table space. Now, what is this default table space? In this query, when we created user1, we did not specify any default table space. What happens is your database will have a default table space as a property. This default table space is assigned to a user for which you do not specify default table space while creating the user let us check the default table space of our database can you see default permanent table space users and this is the reason for user 1 where we did not specify the default table space still we are seeing users as the default table space correct in case if you do not specify a default table space the database default table space will be assigned to a user in real time make sure you always assign a table space to a user otherwise sometimes what happens is in some databases the system table space might be the default table space and then when the user starts creating the tables or other database objects it will increase the system table space and that will again cause a lot of performance issues because all your base tables and other metadata resides inside the system table space grant revoke user permissions when you create a new user you directly cannot connect to SQL plus because the new user lacks create session privilege you need to grant connect comma resource to user one until you grant these 
permissions, the user one cannot connect to the SQL Plus. First, let us try to connect SQL Plus with user one and see what happens. Now I'm trying to connect with usr1 slash oracle because we updated the password, right? What it says, user usr1 lacks create session privilege, login denied, which means we need to give these permissions, then only the user will be able to connect to the database. So we'll connect back with slash ssdpa. Now you can grant connect comma resource to user1. Now let us try to connect to the database using usr1. Enter and we see we are connected. Now let us type our command show user. See we are connected to the database as usr1. By default you should not always grant these two permissions to the user. In real time, the application team will tell you that what all permissions are to be given to a user. And as a DBA, you just have to assign those permissions to the user. The same way where you specify grant, if you specify revoke, the commands will be removed or the permissions will be removed from the user. Next, how to grant quota on a table space to user. By default, when you assign a default table space, the user can actually utilize the entire size of the table space. But let us assume we don't want the user one to use entire table space, but to just use 10 MB out of the user's table space. Right. Now we are restricting the user one not to exceed 10 MB on user's table space. So we'll have to execute this query with connect slash ssdpa user, alter user user1 quota 10 MB on users. Now the user1 cannot store more than 10 MB data onto the user's table space. This way we are kind of like allocating some quota out of the entire user's table space. This again depends in real time, sometimes you allocate quota or sometimes you don't allocate quota depends on environment to environment. But you should know that you can even restrict users in the amount of space they can use inside a table space. Next, although quota doesn't represent reserving the space, if two or more users are sharing a table space, quota will be filled up in first come first serve basis. Now when we say 10 MB, it doesn't mean that 10 MB is reserved for the user, user1. If there are two users and they share the same table space users, then whoever stores the data first, for them the table space will be given. So 10 MB is not a reservation, it is just that that's the max limit the user can store. If the user is not using, then definitely the other user can use it if they have that much quota onto the table space. Now how can we change the default table space of a user? We know that both the users that we created just now, user1 and user2, the default table space is users. We can definitely change the default table space by the simple command alter user user1 default table space and give the name of the table space. Now first of all, before even assigning a default table space, let us check the number of table spaces inside the database. Select name from v$ table space. We have system sysox undo one users temp and example. So we can very much assign the example table space to the users as the default table space. Alter user user one default table spaces example. Enter user is altered. Let us run the db underscore users query to check what is the default table space. Where is user1? Now we can see user1 default table space is example. This way you can change the default table space of any user inside the database. The objects created in the old table space remain unchanged even after changing the default table space for a user. 
Internally, Oracle does not move the objects from the old table space to the new table space. Objects will remain same and user will have access to all the objects. How do you drop a user? With the first command drop user user1, you can drop a user if user does not own any object. For example, in our case, we created user1, but user1 does not have any objects inside the database. No table, nothing has been created. We can simply drop the user by this command, but if there is a user inside the database who owns some objects, like the user has created some tables or any other objects, then you need to use this word cascade and then only the user will be dropped. In our case, the user1 does not own any object. So what we can do is we can directly run this command and drop the user. Drop user, user1. User dropped. The same way we can drop the user, user2 dropped. So this way you can actually create users inside database. You can assign default table spaces to the users. You can grant permissions to the user. You can lock and unlock accounts of the users and you can drop the users.